In this exercise, we're going to check out the line tool and also revisit the stroke panel. Now let's go back over to our tools panel and select the line tool and come back to our page and you can draw a line anywhere. But if you want the line to be straight, just hold your shift key down and you see how it constrains it. Otherwise, if you let go of it, then it just goes randomly to wherever. So if you want to constrain it to a 90 or to a 45 degree, just hold the shift key down and that'll hold it in place. Okay, and just let go. Now let's bring our stroke panel out. And let's go ahead and select stroke. And let's zoom in a little bit so we can see what we're doing. Just scoot this down a little bit. Okay, now we currently have a black line at one point. And as the point size increases, so does the line thickness. So let's just go and select eight point and you see what a considerable difference that makes. Now, if we wanted to change the color, you can just go to the Tools panel and where the little pencil is, just go ahead and click on that black and let go and you'll see a palette of colors comes up. And just go and pick a color. Uh, let's go pick red. Okay, now our line is red. And if you deselect, you also see that the end is uh, straight and that's how it is for the cap. And if you want to add a dash, let's just go and just, let's say, just add any dash. And if you wanted to add arrows to it, just go down to the arrowheads. And currently it's set to none. Let's just go and just uh, pick an arrow. And there's your arrow. And let's go and grab, a, let's go grab a different one. This also scrolls down too. And here's a different type of arrow. Okay, now we have two arrows. And also, I want you to keep in mind that right now we're at an eight-point line, so our arrowheads are big. As the point size decreases, let's go back to one point. You notice the arrowheads shrink, too. I'll just deselect so you can still see that they're there, but wow, did they get tinier. Now let's go ahead and just draw an open path. Uh, let's use our Bezagon tool. Just click on the Bezagon tool, and I want to just draw an open path holding my shift key down so it'll be straight because remember the alt or the option that was for the curved okay hold the shift key down now I have my straight line and just go back to my arrow so I can just select now while the open path is still selected let's make it a lot thicker let's make it a uh, 12 point okay now we can see the edges and what I want to show you here is what the different caps and what the different joins look like Okay, so let's zoom in just a little bit here and let's scoot this guy out of the way. Okay, just like this and let's just move this. Okay, now let's select that and right now we're at the square cap and that forms a pointed end. Okay, now let's go and select the rounded cap and you see the edges are now rounded here instead of being squared and let's select the rounded join and the same occurs here also. This is also rounded. Now let's go ahead and select the last on the cap. And what the difference is between these two, okay, let me just click and you see what happens here. Okay, on this top one, this, this first one, it stops, you notice how the point stops exactly at the line? Now let's go ahead and click on this one. On this one, the square cap point extends past the end point of the line. So that's why it gets longer, because it extends past the end point of the actual line itself. Okay, so now let's choose the beveled edge join and see what that looks like. And you see how the edge is beveled on here. So then there's the three different um, joins and the caps for you to uh, play around with. And while this is still selected, let's just go and uh, play with some of the strokes. We are on basic right now. Let's just change it to brush and see what happens. And right now we are at a default paint. Let's go to a default spray and see what that looks like. And that's kind of trippy, but you know, that's just uh, something else that we're going to get into later. So I don't want to talk about it right now, but uh, there's a lot that can be done with the brush stroke. 
and let's go to custom and it shows you here all the different uh, custom patterns that you can choose from and let's go to pattern and you see a message pops up here pattern fills and strokes are not intended for output to high resolution devices what happens is that you might be able to see it on the screen but then when it prints it won't come out I'm going to increase the line width so we can see some of these patterns a little bit better let's just go to 8 point and just check some of these out and like anything you know just play with these and what they look like doesn't necessarily look like when they print so if you're uh, set on using a certain pattern go ahead and try it and print it out first before you use it because it might not exactly be what you see on the screen and the stroke panel can also be used for um, pen strokes for bezagon strokes it can be used for any type of line stroke that you create and you can apply these patterns to all of them and the same goes for adjusting the uh, width of the line as well as the colors and using the cap and join uh, commands and dashes and arrowheads as well okay well now that you've learned how to use some of the different selections within the uh, stroke panel you know once again I encourage all of you just to experiment, you know, just draw different shapes, uh, different closed paths, fill them with patterns, and just play around, and you'll get some pretty cool effects that you might really like. In this exercise, we're going to explore the pencil tool, which is located in the main tools panel. So let's just take our arrow tool and select that, and come back to our document page, and just draw a random line. And you notice how different this is from the line tool. The pencil tool, you basically have to draw one straight line, and if you want to constrain it, you have to hold the shift key down. With the pencil tool, you can just draw random lines of any shape or form. Now, if you look at the shape that we just drew, you see that there's little points there. But we didn't add any points like we had to do with the pen or the bezagon, where we had to actually click the separate points and let's go and select our arrow tool and grab one of those points and see what happens whoa see how the thing stretches out so you can reshape these too you know just play around and see what each one does and then if you turn these handles just like we did before it stretches way out and just play with it and I mean you can really get this thing far out and just play and just stretch anyway you get my point now let's go back to the pencil tool icon and you see that little corner tab there well that means that there's other selections within it so let's go ahead and double click on that and the dialog box comes up and there's three selections under tool operations freehand which is currently what we drew this in the second one is variable stroke and the third is calligraphic pen and under options we currently have a precision setting of five uh, I'm just gonna leave it at that because the higher the number it's going to increase the points as well and remember we just talked about that having too many points so just leave it around four or five because the higher it is also the more jagged it looks so let's just leave that and then right now we have draw dotted line unchecked let's go ahead and check that so you can see what that does and hit OK now let's just draw another line and then this time watch the trail as I'm drawing you see that that's what the draw dotted line feature is and I kinda like that you know because then I can just see exactly what path I'm following here now let's change our tool operation to variable stroke Let's go back and double click on that and select variable stroke for right now let's go ahead and remove auto remove overlap and I'll explain that to you when we draw our first stroke and for the settings of the width the higher the number the thicker the stroke gets so let's leave uh, the minimum like at let's put it at 7 and the maximum let's bump it up a little bit to like 51 that's cool let's just hit OK and let's just draw a new line let's just scoot over with our hand tool it's handy okay let's just go and draw another line here
Now you see how this is a lot different from the freehand tool where this one draws in double thick lines. This one's more, it looks more like a closed path where the other one is more just like a regular plain line. Because this path here, you're able to fill this with a color if you like. The only undesirable part that there is are, is the overlap, and that's the box that I wanted to uncheck because I wanted to show you exactly what the, an overlap looks like. And uh, just to show you what the fill looks like in it, let's go ahead and uh, go to our bucket here and select a color and deselect on there and see how ugly that is? That doesn't look too cool. So let's go back and double click on that and then this time let's go ahead and check that. And in parentheses here it says slow because it does slow your machine down a bit but you know that's the price you pay for something to look good so hit OK and let's use our handy hand and scroll over let's see let's go down here and let's draw another line okay see how much cleaner that is I mean it's way cleaner because otherwise we'd have like this major overlap thing going on in here and let's go ahead and fill that right now and see how that looks see how much better Let's just move this down so you can compare. I mean, big difference, you know. Feel free to, you know, just go back here and double click and, you know, play with these settings. You know, change the minimum, make it a little higher and see what happens. You know, just play around with it. And that's the only way that you're going to learn. Whoa, see, I mean, see what a difference that made, just bumping it up that little bit. And then if you fill that, I mean, you just get all different kinds of effects. So that's what I mean. I just encourage you just to play around with it because I can sit here and show you so many examples but you know unless you play on your own that's the only way you're gonna get it okay so let's move on and go to our calligraphic pen let's go ahead and leave the precision setting the same draw dotted line that's cool uh, remove overlap that's cool uh, let's change the width though let's just stick it to fixed right here just like that and fixed just sets it so you just have a single width for the stroke now go ahead and hit OK. Now let's give ourselves a little bit of room here. Scoot all this out of the way with our handy hand. And let's draw an L. Now you see how this stroke differs from the other two? You have an obvious thick and thin going here. And let's go ahead and give this a fill. And once again, well, let's give it a little lighter one so you can see the overlap. Okay, once again, we have the overlap on, so we have this ugly line going through here. Wouldn't make any difference, say, if you didn't have a stroke on there. So it's like if you were to deselect the stroke, and that's, by the way, is this white box with the red slash through it. Then it's cool. It doesn't make any difference. But then, say, if you do want a stroke, let's just go back and get the black. Select that and get the black. Yeah, see, that's really ugly. Okay, but the cool thing is, is that if you wanted to edit these points, you can. See, I mean, you can, oops, just grab it and just do whatever you want, you know, make it as wild or, you know, do whatever once again. Okay, anyway, let's go back here and uh, double click. And this time, let's check auto remove overlap and let's draw another L. Okay, you see how much better it looks? But the only thing is that we can't edit this, where the other one you had different points you can stretch out, and this one you don't. There's a way to get around this. Uh, we can go up and go Modify and split it. And then now it is editable, but there's only one drawback, and I'll show you that in just a minute here. Let's go ahead and fill that, and I'll show you what happens. Okay, by splitting it, We've eliminated these two paths here where there was open. Now it's just one solid path here. And then, in essence, what's happened is that these two have formed themselves into two separate paths now. So what we're going to do, well, the easy fix is that we can fill that with a white. Okay, and that looks fine. 
but that's not going to be too happening like say if you have a gradient background or something and you know you have to see through that that's going to be kind of tough to mimic and it's just going to be way too time consuming so let's go ahead and do this route um, I'm going to show you something that I'm going to show you again later on in the CD but I just feel that it's very essential for this exercise so let's just go ahead okay first of all let's go ahead and select this and remember whatever editing you have to do do it now while you still have these points so let's oops control Z that or Apple Z and let's just select a point and stretch it out and let's grab that end point and just bring that out a bit more and deselect and let's select these two that we turned white and let's go to our little bucket and see this white box with the red slash that's no fill so let's go ahead and select that now let's go ahead and select this first closed path here and select this other path and let's go up to modify go to combine let's go to punch and check it out it punches a hole directly through the path it was on top of but now it's rendered itself uneditable once again but we'll be able to punch this other hole so let's go ahead and select that path and select the other path go back up to modify combine and punch now is that cool or what and you know once again if you want to do any alterations to it you're gonna have to go and split the path again and then you know just do your changes and just do what we did all over again but you know that's one way to get around it and just to go over what we just learned we now know how to draw with the pencil tool and its freehand variable and calligraphic settings and for those of uh, whom who like working with the uh, drawing tablets uh, the variable stroke and the calligraphic pen work very nicely as both settings will respond to the uh, pressure sensitivity of the stylus. In this exercise we're going to learn how to use the polygon tool. Let's go ahead and go to the main tools panel, click on the polygon tool and draw a polygon. And you see it sways side to side so to constrain it just hold your shift key down and that'll hold it in place. Okay and just let go now let's go ahead and draw a star so let's go back here and once again you see the little corner tab which means that there's more selections double click on the tool and let's time let's select star and let's keep it on automatic but let's give it the regular five points that which most stars have okay hit five hit OK and let's draw the star now and see what that looks like okay let's go back and double click here I want to show you something else see currently the star points are set to automatic and we have the acute and obtuse so let's go ahead and set on manual and you can change the look of the star you can make it really skinny and just make it fatter and fatter until it's just almost like a circle now if you have it on automatic and then you move these around you see what just happened it just automatically kicked it over onto the manual button let's do that again watch see that the minute you touch it it goes right to the manual let's go ahead and just click OK and let's draw this shape and you see what an unusual shape that is almost looks like a bunch of uh, cookie cutters here and if you do want to edit any of these points just select your arrow tool and you know once again just get these points and just stretch them out and even with this conventional star you can stretch out all the different points here and just freak it out or you know whatever you want to do with it and you can even fill it if you want to anyway this is pretty simple now you know how to draw polygons and stars it's pretty easy just go here and you know once again just play with it you know you get some pretty cool little shapes here you know just move this little toggle bar just back and forth and you know just experiment with it and then each time you do that you know you can get new ideas of what you want to do see that looks pretty cool so just go ahead and play and um, good luck
The rectangle tool is one of Freehand's most basic shapes on the tool panel. So let's just go to the tool panels right now and select the rectangle tool, click on that, and come back and let's draw a perfect square by holding down the shift key to constrain it. Okay, and let go. And let's draw another square, but this time let's draw it from its center by depressing the Option key for the Mac or the Alt key for the PC and simultaneously holding down the Shift key as well. And you see the crosshair just changed into the little target or registration mark. Okay, now go ahead and hold the Shift key down and draw another square and just let go. Now let's go back and let's double click on the rectangle tool because here's that little corner tab again. And within the rectangle tool dialog box there's a corner radius and I think you remember that from our object inspector where we created a box and we gave it a corner radius. Well this is the same thing except in a different spot. So we're just going to enter the same value as we did before, 0.25 and click OK and now let's draw another box and you see now this box has rounded corners or a corner radius and let's go and take a look at our object inspector and you see that it has the X and Y coordinates and our width and height measurements as well as a corner radius settings in here as well. The ellipse is another one of Freehand's basic shapes so let's go back to the main tools panel and select the ellipse tool and go back to our document page and draw an ellipse. Now if you want a perfect circle just like the square just hold down the shift key and that'll draw a perfect circle. And also if you want to draw from the center point remember option for the Mac and alt for the PC and just hold that down and then hold the shift key down simultaneously and draw it from the center point. And like the rectangle tool you can also check or change the dimensions by going over and looking at the object inspector. In this exercise we're going to use a spiral tool. The spiral tool is located in the tools panel right here and it's also located in the extras tool panel. Let's just go ahead and select that and watch what happens. When you select one, both are selected as each reflects each other. So if your Extras Tool Panel isn't out, just go up to Window, go to Toolbar, and go to Extra Tool and just click that and then it'll appear. Okay, let's get out of there and let's just double click here right now and we see we have a different a whole bunch of different settings here the first one here spiral type uh, the one that's selected on the left that one is a non-expanding uh, spiral which uh, creates an evenly spaced spiral so in other words even as big or as small as it gets it's evenly spaced and this one here on the right that one is an expanding spiral so in other words as it opens up further it expands out and here's the expansion rate here it currently set at 50 percent and you can use the slider just to adjust the uh, percentage and once again just play with it and see what happens and down here you can draw it by rotations and you can also set the number of rotations uh, within the spiral itself and you can draw it from the center and it shows you what direction that you can draw it from as well Let's just go back to the draw by and let's click on that and let's see what else is in there. We have increments. And with increments, as the spiral grows bigger, it adds more rotations to it. And currently it's set on the expanding spiral so you can adjust the starting radius. Now let's go and take a look at the draw from. Currently it's set at center, which means it draws the spiral from the center it draws a spiral from the edge and this one corner it draws a spiral from the corner let's just keep it there and all these are as the direction that the spiral is drawn either from the left or from the right okay let's just cancel out of here for right now and let's just go ahead and draw a spiral and let's just go back here and double click and check our settings again 
and let's go ahead and change the number of rotations to 10 and let's change the direction on there too and let's hit OK Wow you see what a difference that made now let's go back there again and double click and let's see let's change draw by to increments this time let's move this to 76 and see what happens I hit OK well you see how trippy that is that's cool as it's drawing it from the center okay, let's try another one let's go double click and this time let's change it and let's draw it from the edge and see what happens see how that is it's drawing it from the edge and let's change it to the corner okay hit okay we're running out of room here so let's draw one out here on the pasteboard oh that's cool all right anyway so you know just go ahead and play around once again with all the different settings and you know you can use this for a lot of things it's uh, I've used it for several of my designs and it comes in really handy on a lot of things so yeah once again just go ahead and just play with all these different controls and then you know just come up with something really cool alright anyways good luck to you on this lesson hi in this lesson we're going to talk about the lasso tool the lasso tool is designed to select points on an object at different angles so let's go ahead and go to our tools panel and select the lasso tool but first let's uh, double click on the lasso tool to take a look and see what's underneath there and you see that there's a box that says contact sensitive what that means is that if you have that checked and you were to go to your object and just marquee over a portion of it uh, it should select the entire object but you know I have to tell you I've had that checked at times sometimes it has and sometimes it hasn't so I'm not going to guarantee that but for this exercise I'm just going to go ahead and leave it unchecked and just hit OK okay and let's go back out to our object and let's just select it and uh, let's just marquee over a portion of these points just like that and let go and then you see the little white points that's the ones that are selected and for instance if you want it to select more points just hold your shift key down and just go to another point and just select it and I think you get the idea the great thing about this is that you could select points at different angles all at once where if you were to use the arrow tool and wanted to select points at a diagonal you'd have to click one by one by one by one so this saves you a lot of time hi for this exercise we're going to talk about the knife tool which is located in the main tools panel let's just go and get the knife tool but before we do anything let's just look at the settings and double click on it the first one here is tool operation we have freehand and straight and let's just select freehand and what freehand is is when you make your cut the cut results in a freehand cut and straight is exactly you know what it is straight and the width determines how wide your cut will be and under options we have closed cut paths and tight fit closed cut paths is when you make a cut and it closes the paths up just like this example I've already drawn here of this happy face you made the cut and it sealed the paths immediately and tight fit what that means is that when you make your cut it follows the uh, precision of your mouse very closely so okay for right now let's just select closed cut paths and deselect tight fit and let's go ahead and hit OK okay now let's go ahead and draw a circle so we can demonstrate the knife tool select your circle and come back to your page and I'm holding the shift key down to constrain the movement and here's a circle now let's go back to our knife tool and let's just make our own little happy face here whoa it's kinda of wide so if that's too wide you can always Apple Z or Control Z that and say no I don't like that let's go back and adjust the width okay let's just bring the width down okay and hit OK now let's try that again 
Okay, that's a lot better. Now let's go back in and increase the width. Hit OK. And there's our own version of our happy face. Okay, let's go back to the knife tool and double click once again. Now let's set it on straight. And let's just leave the width. Let's just bring it down a little bit. And let's leave it at close cut pass. And what that will result in is a cut that's uh, very similar to this one right here. So let's just go ahead and hit OK. And let's use our uh, space bar to get our hand tool and scoot over to this next page here. Let's draw another circle. And always make sure that your object is selected because if it's deselected and you try to use the knife tool, it won't cut. So always make sure that your object is selected. Okay, let's go ahead and select the knife tool again. But, you know, before we do that, let us let me show you one thing. Remember we learned how to make guides? Well, let's make some guides for this. And let's just go ahead and use our line tool. And draw a first line here. And draw another line. And I'm holding the shift key down to constrain my movement. And let's just draw another one here, and another one there. Okay, let's grab the center line and just scoot it over a bit. And let's just scoot this one down. I'm going to use my arrow key on my keyboard. Okay, that's good. And let's just scoot this over a little bit. Okay, that's cool. Now go ahead and select all the lines and go to your layers panel right here and remember just hit guides oops apple z that we don't want the circle selected so let's deselect and do that over okay now let's hit guides okay that's better and let's lock that layer and you know for your guides to be visible remember you always have to be beneath the guides layer. Right now we're on the foreground layer. That's where the objects are. And you always know that because it's highlighted. And if the guides layer were ben uh, beneath you, you wouldn't be able to see it. Let me just show you this real quick. Drag that and see how they disappear. So if you're using your guides, uh, make sure that they're always on top because otherwise they're going to go hide and you won't be able to see them. So now let's just go back and select our circle and go back to the knife tool and let's draw our first cut okay there's one it's two there's another and another oops let's select these here Okay, now let's try that again. All right. But I missed that one a little bit. I missed my mark on that one, but I think you get the point. Okay, let's go and demonstrate one more. Let's just use our hand and scoot up some more and just go back here and double click. We're going to leave it on straight. Uh, I'm going to bump the width up just a hair. And um, let's just put it on tight fit and deselect close cut paths. And now since I deselected close cut paths, uh, it's not going to seal it. So therefore, if there's a fill in there, the fill will no longer be because once it opens the path up, then there's a, the uh, pads need to be closed in order to retain the fill. And thus the cut will result in something like this example that I've drawn here. So let's hit OK, and this time let's draw a rectangle. Just draw a rectangle here, and go back to your knife tool, select that, and let's just 
make a cut vertically and make a cut horizontally. Okay, and let's just deselect and just select that point, that one, that one, and that one, and hit delete. And see, it now had, remember it had a fill, it now opened the paths up. So now it cannot retain a fill. In order to retain a fill, these paths here have to be closed. So anyway, you learned some pretty cool little features about the knife tool, that it's just not to uh, dissect objects. You can do some pretty cool things with it. So it's so like anything, go ahead and experiment, play around, and just have fun with this one also. In this exercise, we're going to show you a few different features you can use to edit a path. And what I've done here is I've drawn uh, just a freeform uh, curve. And let's just go ahead and select that. And you know, one of the simple ways to edit this path is that you can grab one of the anchor points and just pull at it. Or you know, you can pull, oh, oops, I didn't mean to do that. But you know, you can just pull it that way. Uh, another thing you can do too is if you wanted to add more points, uh, you can use your bezagon or your pen tool. And let's just go ahead and select the bezagon for now. And let's just add a point here and there and select the pen and just do the same thing. Point there and there. So now if you wanted to shape your path using those, you know, just go ahead and pull that. Or, you know, you can pull the handles out and just turn it or do whatever. Okay, another tool that we have in our tools panel to reshape our path is the freeform tool. So let's just double click on that and take a look at that. And under tool operations, we have push, pull, and reshape area. And under push, pull, uh, it's a lot more subtler than the reshape area. They both uh, reshape your path. But then with the push-pull movement, it's more of curvier reshape. And with the reshape area, as you pull and push in, you'll see that it's a lot sharper. And when I, once I demonstrate that, that'll be a lot clearer to you. But yeah, the uh, push-pull is more like if you were to like knead dough, it would be very curvy. And for your push settings, we have size and we have precision. The size controls the size of the area being pushed and for precision we have a setting of five which is like in the middle right now let's leave it there because the higher the number uh, the more sensitive the mouse becomes to any little little minute movements that you might make and for pull settings we have bend by length and right now let's see let's take a look we have bend between points. When you're set at bend between length, you can pretty much bend anywhere on your path and you, you can reshape it. But when it's set to uh, bend between points, then you're going to have to go between two anchor points uh, to be able to reshape your object. Okay, let's leave it on by length right now. And for the length setting, this determines how much of the path will be altered by just setting the length. So, you know, once again, just play with the different settings to see what kind of result you get. And for pressure, this is great for people who have drawing tablets. You can check one or both of these boxes here and just, you know, play with it once again and then see if you notice any difference. But that's what these uh, settings are made for. So let's just go ahead and hit OK. And then now let's just go back out here and just reshape our object or push and pull. And you notice the arrow is white. And when it has a little O by it, that means it's in its push position right now. And then we'll just push. And then now I'm going to pull. And you see now the arrow turns white and it has that little tiny S by it. So let's just go ahead and push. Do another one and another one. Okay, that's enough. Now let's go back to the uh, freeform tool and just double click on that. And notice too that when it's set for the push and pull, 
there's a little red dot here. Now we're going to hit reshape and let's just say OK for right now so I can show you the difference. See what happens? Now we have that red O over the top, a red zero on top of it. So let's just go ahead and double click on that and just go through these settings now. So now we have it on reshape. And now for under settings we have size, strength, and precision. Size controls the size of the reshape area and strength uh, that basically just determines uh, how long your drag will be and you'll see what I mean once we demonstrate this tool. It's like the higher the number then the more of a drag will pull like really way out there. And the precision once again it's the same thing as the last. The, the greater the number the more sensitive your mouse will become to your every movement and the same goes for pressure those of whom who have a, a drawing tablet you know you might want to check these features and uh, see if this makes a difference for you so just hit OK and now let's go and uh, demonstrate our tool here and you see how different that is it's a lot sharper just like I was trying to describe to you and let's just go ahead and pull that one way out and pull that one. Oh, got away from me here, so let's come back. Okay, now let's go ahead and uh, change the settings on this. Let's up the size a little bit to there and uh, let's try a precision setting of a little higher as well. Okay. Whoa, you see what happens? What happens here is that since we upped everything and you see the big circles, that shows you the area that's being reshaped. Okay, that's a bit much. So, you know, once again, just go ahead and go in there and let's just set this guy way down. And let's try it now and see what happens. It's still quite a bit. But you see, that's pretty cool, though. It's like if you want, you can really do some crazy things with that. So, whoa. And that's pretty bizarre. But you see how instead of uh, just grabbing one, it'll, whatever, which one it crosses, it just goes and grabs all those, too. Okay, that's enough. So anyway, you know, once again, just get in here and just play with these tools. But you, now you see exactly, you know, what you have and what you're capable of doing. So, you know, you know that you can reshape using the arrow tool. Uh, you can add points with the pen tool, with the Bezagon tool. And you can just do some wild things with the uh, freeform tool in both the push-pull and the reshape. So once again, you know, happy playing and just experiment with this and have fun. Okay, for this exercise, we're just going to learn about some basic fills and strokes. So let's start by selecting one of our objects and filling it. And you see right here where the pencil is, that uh, stands for the stroke, and it's set at red. And the little bucket is where the fill is. So let's click on that, and let's just select the color. And then now that's filled. And let's go ahead and select the bucket again. But this time, let's just click on this and uh, select a new color. Let's go for red this time. And this time, let's uh, fill an object by just dragging the color in and dropping it in. And the same goes for the uh, stroke as well. You can just drag it and just drop it on top of the stroke, just like that. So now let's take a look at the uh, Fill Inspector. And if you don't already have it open, just go up to Window, Inspector, and select Fill. OK, let me just select this again. And you see that the red is represented here as a basic color, and it's shown here, but there's uh, no name for it. So let's go ahead and click on this arrow, and we can add it to Swatches by simply clicking here and an Add to Swatches window pops up with the process color name. So just go ahead and hit Add and then you'll see that the process color name is added to the uh, list right here. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, Swatches panel and if you don't have it open just go to Window, Panels and select Swatches. Okay, mine's here is just minimized so I'm just going to click on that 
and you see that this red was added because we just added it to the swatches okay let's do the same for this blue so you can watch what happens now and we'll just click here and go add to swatches and we'll go add and see it's added to the uh, swatch list now another way you can add color to your swatches if you go here and you select the color and you can just drag and drop it in as well and you can add it in that fashion too now the swatches panel comes with uh, default colors the white black and registration of course none is none and what registration is because when you look at this you think well black and registration are the same what the difference is is that if you're going to press with something and you want the uh, black to carry through to all your separations just like registration marks you know you want it to go all the way through your uh, separation so then that's when you select the registration so for what we're doing if you're going to use black just select the black we don't need to uh, select registration okay let's go take a look at the color mixer panel now let's just click on there and if you don't have it out already just go to window panel and click on color mixer okay the first setting we have is the CMYK the second one is the RGB and of course you know you can just play with these uh, sliders and just slide these to you know get different color values and this is a hue light and saturation or HLS and same here you can just slide this around and then you can also see where this little round O is you can just move that around as well and if that's too light you can always darken it and then the color shows at the very bottom in this window down here and if you like a color and you say hey that's cool I like that you can always drag that and pop it into here and remember you can always pull your panels apart too you can undock it like that and if you see another color you like hey you think this is a cool color you can also grab that and just drop that little square into your swatches panel and it'll automatically add it as well and that's a nice fast and easy way to do that let's just dock this back in here just like that and pop that in can't let go and let's just go back to our mixer panel again and you can also add your colors this way too by clicking on that other button and you can add it to your swatches that way as a process or as a spot color now this is the system color picker that's just predominant to the Windows platform uh, this contains 48 basic colors and for those of you on the Macintosh uh, you have the Apple color picker and that lets you define colors as uh, like CMYK RGB HLS and HSV which is hue saturation and value and it also lets you choose from 60 color crayon picker or the 216 color web HTML picker you can always uh, use the eyedrop uh, tool also to extract color out and let's go get the eyedrop tool which is right here the little eyedropper and let's say you like this red you can grab that and you can drop that in here and just drop the color and just drop it so that's another little handy tool that we can use as well okay let's take a look at the tints panel now and what the tints panel does it creates lighter versions of uh, colors that are defined out of your swatches panel so let's just click here and then you see we have a whole list of colors right here so just go ahead and let's pick a color I oh, didn't want that I wanted the blue okay and what we have here down here you see there's two colors a split this is the original color and this is a percentage and right now we have an oddball amount of 48 percent but that's where you can create oddball uh, percentages of color is here and then whatever it looks like you can see it right here and if you like that you can add that to your swatches panel simply hit that hit add and then now it's added to your list it's right there and another cool thing too is that you can also add these colors by simply dragging and dropping okay let's go back to the swatches panel for a moment just go ahead and select that let's just drag it out here so we can see it better and look at all these colors we got going here 
there's a lot of colors and let's look at our document page here and you can tell by looking at our objects that we're not using all of them so what are we going to do we want to get rid of them we can go ahead and select it this way and uh, click on this arrow and go remove or you can click on one and then just hold your shift key down and select them in multiples and go remove but there's an even easier way if you go up to the extras panel we have delete now go to delete unused name colors and that'll eliminate all the colors that aren't in use and let's just go back to this arrow in our swatches panel click on that and just to show you that there is an extensive library of colors uh, for those of whom who are in the printing world this would come in real handy uh, we're not going to get into this as this is a beginning course and I just wanted to lay the foundation for uh, fill color and stroke color in this lesson so just be aware it's there and we can also import colors in too if you wanted to import any let's just show you an example and let's just hit the orange hit OK and it's added it and you can also export colors out as well if you wanted to export a color out you can just choose a color here that you want to export and uh, name it give it a file name find a destination for it and just hit your save and then you can do that and then I already showed you uh, how to remove colors you can replace colors out and as well as duplicate colors well and if you're uh, printing these you can make a spot color or you can make it a process color and you can also change the colors from CMYK to RGB or vice versa well now that you know how to fill your objects with color and uh, change your stroke colors we're ready to move on in this exercise we're going to look at gradient fills so let's go back to our fill inspector and just click on that and if you don't have it just go up to window inspector and go to fill okay let's scroll down to gradient and you see that we have a different bunch of different little settings here uh, these type are the three different types of gradients that you can get the first one is graduated the center is radial and the third is a contour and these are the two different type of tapers that you can get for the graduated fill which is linear and logarithmic uh, linear tapers color in equal increments logarithmic tapers in wide bands let's go ahead and scroll to the uh, top page here let's just use our hand because I've made an example here and I can show you the difference okay, let's scoot this out of the way this is a graduated linear fill and this is a graduated logarithmic fill and this is a radial and this is a contour this is one of my favorites it looks pretty cool anyway I did this one this little ball here the sphere I did this with a uh, radial so let's go ahead and uh, create some examples right now see let's scoot down again and scoot back up to our blank page and let's go ahead and draw another circle Okay, hold your shift key down to constrain the movement and let's pick the radial and right now that looks kind of weird you know we want to give it like a 3d kind of a look so let's just uh, reposition where the radial is and we can do that by this control here and where we move it and drop it is where it's going to be and we said no that's too much and we can scoot it over and if that's too bright we can just click on the white color and we can subdue that a bit and just add a gray in there so it's a little bit more realistic and let's take the stroke off too and come here and select the stroke and pick none see so that gives it kind of a 3d look you know if it's still not enough we can just move it but you get the general picture let's go ahead and create another gradient here let's use a square okay right now we have the graduated and let's go ahead and turn this wheel and what this wheel does is it changes the different degrees that the uh, gradients at see we can let go here or you can hold your shift key down 
and it'll constrain it to 45 degree increments. So you just like that. And just let it go. And you can also change these colors too. Just go ahead and pick a new color. And you can also add colors as well. Just drag one off of here. And we can change that. God, this is going to be hideous. And let's change this. And you can just reposition them as well. You can also go to the uh, swatches panel too. And if you want to like yank a color out from there and just drag it up and just drop it, that'll work too. Yeah, you can create a lot of cool effects with uh, gradients. Let's just do one more example. I double click on the polygon tool and I want a star. Set it at automatic. And give it five. Hit OK. And let's go ahead and draw a star. Well, that's, that fill is not going to do. So let's go ahead and pick the contour. That's better. And let's change the color here. Let's get rid of the stroke. See how cool that looks? And then you can also play with the taper too. Uh, it's too dark. But you see as I move the slider to the left, as the value gets smaller, the white gets brighter. Oops, that's too bright. But you get the general idea and just play around with that. And then you can also adjust where the contour will be too. And then if you want to move it back, like see, let me do it again. Just hold your shift key down and just move it and it snaps it right back to the center to the original spot. In this exercise, we're going to use the lens effect. Let's just go to our fill inspector and select an object and I've already applied the lens effect to most of these except for this one here so I can show you how to do that but right now let's just grab this and overlay it on top of the object and you can see right through it and this one still has a basic fill so let's go ahead and apply a lens effect to that one just scroll down to lens select that and it automatically defaults to a 50 percent opacity Okay, let's go ahead and demonstrate a couple of the different effects within transparency. Let's select this object and drag it on top of the circle and let's hit snapshot. And what has just occurred is it's just taken a snapshot of the object that it was on top of. And now let's demonstrate objects only. Let's drag that on top of the star and hit objects only. And now it's captured the overlapping image within the lens. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look at uh, Magnify. Uh, let's just go and draw a square and let's just randomly place it anywhere. And you see how it magnifies the object that it's on top of? That's pretty cool. And then you can adjust the uh, size here. Right now it's two times uh, larger uh, than normal so let's try like 1.5 and see you can see it a lot better. And also you can adjust the center point. Let's just go ahead and check that and you see where the center point is? You can move it around. You see that? And you can control where you, you can view your objects that way too so that's pretty cool. Okay, let's take a look at some of the other features within Lens. But first, let's move, reposition some of these. And let's just move that. Okay, now let's go to our Tools panel and draw a circle. And it's still on magnify, so it's magnifying all those objects. But let's go to the next one to invert. 
Now what invert does, it reverses the color of the objects that it's laying on top of, as you can see here. So you can get some pretty dramatic effects with this feature. And you can also take a snapshot of this object as well. Let's just go ahead and click this little box here and just move it away. So that's another thing that you can use that for, so that's neat. Okay, now let's go to Lighten. Let's go back up here and select Lighten. And let's go to our Tools panel and draw another circle. And you see that it lightens the objects that it overlaps here. Just move it around. And let's just keep moving on. Let's go to our next one, Darken. And obviously the lens, wherever the lens overlaps, it darkens the objects. And let's go to Monochrome. And what Monochrome does, it changes the color where the lens overlaps. So now you learn how to apply the different effects of a lens fill. Have fun and, you know, just do your own experimenting with all the different effects. And kind of an FYI, uh, don't apply a lens effect to anything that requires a spot color because it will be converted into a process color, so just to let you know that. But have fun with this tool. In this exercise, we're going to learn how to create a tiled fill. I've made a few examples for you to see what you can do with a tiled fill, and you can do quite a bit, actually. So let's go ahead and create our first tiled fill. I've pre-drawn these stars here and grouped them together. Let's go ahead and select that, go to Edit, Copy, and just deselect your items. And within the tiled window, you want to hit Paste In. And within this display, now you see our little stars. OK, let's go ahead and draw a rectangle. And you see our stars are pasted within the rectangle now. And you'll also notice that the uh, background is also transparent. And that's what makes a tile feel so unique for its transparency. See, you can just drag it over anything, and you can see straight through it, which is cool, because all the fills within freehand are all opaque. So even like with these hatch marks, if you were to create hatch marks within freehand, um, the background is opaque and you cannot see through it. And I use these hatch marks a lot as I draw a lot of maps and I need to call out certain areas and still retain the uh, transparency factor. Okay, let's go ahead and create another tiled image. I've already copied this line within the tile. So you can see it in this little tile window here. Uh, let's just go ahead and draw another rectangle. And when I draw this, we want to hit Paste In, so it'll paste in the line. And there's our hatch. But you say, well, this is too wide. I can't use this for anything. Well, you can adjust that right here at the uh, scale, where this little scale icon is in the x and y coordinates. So let's just hit 50% and highlight this and type in 50 and hit return and you see it's tightened the hatch up and the examples are down here I've made them for you at 25 percent and at 10 percent and if you want it even tighter like let's just do another one let's go 5 and 5 and hit return wow that's really tight but look at that the cool thing is is that you can still see through it So these are great for like uh, maps, like how I use them for. If you want to like uh, just shade a certain area and still retain the transparency, it's, it's great for that. See that? That's really cool. OK, now let me show you how to reposition a tile within an object. And let's just select this guy again. And you can do so by just changing the angle. And you can also change the position by typing a value into the x or the y coordinate down here. If you enter a positive value, it'll move it over to the right. So I'm just going to hit return here and see that. Now if I hit a negative value, let's hit 20. And let's just put a minus sign in front of that. And let's go ahead and hit return. 
see that it moves it over to the left and for the Y if we have a positive value in there let's go 50 it'll go up see that and of course a negative will bring it down so then that's just a couple more things that you know you can just do to move your item around if you don't like the position especially if you have uh, something that's more uniformed like these uh, moon and stars here it depends you may want it off and you you know you may want it kind of you know asymmetrical but you know that's totally up to you anyway now that you've learned how to create tiles you can create some of your own patterns and just have fun with this Okay, in this lesson we're going to learn how to use a tracing tool. So let's go to the tracing tool and that's located in the main tools panel and just double click on that and let's look at some of the settings. In this first setting here you can pick the number of colors you want in your traced image in the range from 2 to 256. Here you can set your trace to either color or trace in grays. You can choose from RGB or CMYK. And this is a resolution setting. You can choose to leave it on high, normal, or low. Let's leave it on high. And this gives you the option to trace all the layers, just the foreground or just the background. Let's leave it on all. And this is the path conversion. And what path conversion is, that just traces along the outer border and it creates a closed field path in which case you have to set the path overlap and currently it's on loose and if you have continuous tone images you would leave it there let's look at the other options uh, you'd set it on none if it were like just line art or text and then tight for like color images and let's just leave it on tight for right now and let's go to the next one center outline center line traces line intensive graphics with very little fills and can be set to uniform let's just get out of here you can keep it on uniform and it'll create very consistent one point strokes if you deselect this then your stroke widths will vary let's just go back here and what center line outline is all that is a combination of these two uh, other options here and for outer edge outer edge just traces the outer contours of your graphics and it's good for creating like a clipping path or a mask okay let's go back here and for trace conformity that determines how closely a path will be traced uh, the higher the value the tighter the trace is and for noise tolerance that sets the value of uh, to eliminate any like unwanted pixels or noise in like a low quality original and the higher the value the more pixels or noise is eliminated and the wand color tolerance that sets the sensitivity in a selection of areas with adjacent colors and value range is 0 to 255 255 being the widest range of color selection Okay, let's just go ahead and click OK. Now let's go ahead and trace our image. Let's just use our little um, tracing tool. It looks like a little wand tool. And just marquee around our area. And let's select our arrow and drag it away so we can take a look at it. And it looks pretty exact. The only difference is, is that if you broke this apart, let's just drag it away, you'll notice that instead of having an outline, it has just a, a solid image in the background and you know if that bugs you you can just select this image here and you can also just assign it a stroke and you can uh, manipulate it in this fashion too that's a little thick but you get the idea see and another thing you can do too I'm just gonna move that out of the way you can just marquee a portion of your image and just trace a portion of it. So you just get little portions of it. Anyway, now you know how to use a tracing tool. So, you know, once again, just play with the different settings and you know see if you like it I don't really use it uh, at all but you know to each his own you might like this tool so experiment with it and have fun 
In this exercise, we're going to learn how to draw with the pen and Bezigon tool. Let's go ahead and go to our tools panel and let's select the pen tool. And let's go back to our shapes here. What I did, I drew these shapes earlier and I just converted them to guides so we can just go ahead and use this as our tracing layer just like we, how we talked about in our guides lesson. And this is a good example to show you. So, and you notice here that I have the uh, guides layer locked so they won't move. All right, anyway, let's go ahead and let's start at uh, the end point here. And let's just go ahead and click. And then you see how the, these little handles come out? Well, just shape these handles and just pull it and stretch it out until, you know, you can get it just about right. And let's just keep going until we finish this. Okay, and that there. And if you get like an oddball one here, it's not, it's just not working, uh, go ahead and undo that. And the easiest way to do that on your keyboard is to Control Z or to Apple Z on the uh, Macintosh. And you see it reverts back to uh, the last step. So let's try that again. Let's just come out a little further and see if that doesn't work better. Okay, that's a little bit better. So let's just keep going. Now almost done. And as you see, you just have to play with this tool. And I might just have to go all the way to the end to get it to stretch. So let's go ahead and stretch all the way to the end. And then it closes the path, but then it's the closest. So let's just go ahead and leave it here like that. And it filled itself because on the tools panel where the colors are, you see that there is a yellow that's already in there. So therefore, it took on that color and it went ahead and filled it. Now let's go and click on our arrow tool and you can reshape these handles. Let's zoom in and take a look at these handles. They look like little sticks and you can just grab them and you see how it shapes. Just, just move this around and let go and you see how it's a little bit better. Now this is still hard to see so let's zoom in so I can show you what it looks like. And use your hand tool and just move. And you see it's kind of crisscrossed here, and that's why we need to zoom in and take a look at what's going on. So let's try to uncrisscross it and just move it about. Okay, that's better. And then just grab it and just stretch it out a bit. Okay, that's pretty close. Now let's zoom out of here. A little bit too much. Let's go. Okay, but you see how the pen tool makes not too many points, but just, you know, several points throughout the entire closed path. Now let's go and choose the Bezigon, or otherwise known as the Bezier tool, and that's right next to it with this arc with the little black dots on it. So go ahead and select that. And for this, it's going to require more points. Uh, I use the Bezigon quite a bit as opposed to the pen tool. I guess just because from what I've learned and what I'm used to. So you're going to set your own personal preference for this as well. Okay, go ahead and let's start at this point and hold your Option key or your Alt key down so it'll curve. Otherwise, what will happen is if you don't, uh, you're going to just get straight lines, straight edges just throughout the uh, entire curve. So go ahead and hold your Alt key down and this will keep a curvature. And you see how this is a lot different from the pen tool because a pen tool, you can come out to this point and what will happen is that, you know, you can bend and curve it. This one, you pretty much have to follow the path and just click along the path and just keep clicking and keep clicking. But you see how much easier this is and that's the reason why a lot of people favor this over the pen tool. And the only drawback to this is that the more points you have, the bigger file size you have as well. Okay, we're almost done here. Just keep clicking. And for this last point, let's go ahead and take your finger off of the Option or the Alt key and go ahead and let's close this path off. 
Okay, now let's go to the magnification tool and select that. And let's take a look at what's going on in this corner. Something seems kind of weird, so let's go look. And you see that there's a whole bunch of little different handles. So just if you want to reshape it to where it hits this guy, just grab this handle and you can stretch. And once again, too, you know how you can pull and the thing goes, whoa, it goes way out. And then you can retract back in and that's too much. So you can bring it up like that. And then there's another handle here and you can pull and that's the wrong one. So you want to just undo that one, just control Z and just grab this one. Okay, that's the right one there. And just just move it around. Okay, and let's zoom out of here. And let's go ahead and select both of these. Grab my arrow tool. And if you want to select uh, multiple items, just hold your shift key down. And now both items are selected. Now compare both of them together. Look at how many points we have on our Bezigon tool opposed to our pen tool. Now this is the big difference we're in file sizes because right now it's not going to make too much of a difference because we only have these two. But when you're working with a lot of graphics with a lot of points, it adds up. And when you try to open certain files that have millions and millions of points it sometimes it's almost impossible to open files because I've done so where I've had just billions of uh, points to where it's just rendered the entire graphic almost unusable at one point so be careful of that both of them have its pros and cons so uh, play with them both and see which one you like and um, just take it from there it's like I said it's a personal preference thing but they're both very cool and useful tools to use